Um, Lisa's, like I said earlier, dumping just a tremendous amount of information on you. And I don't want you to miss the value of that. So I'm going to ask you if you'll go back to the, the page of the two flash, the, the page from the manual, oh. the flash that come through. So I just want you to see what you're getting. And the good thing is, is that she had you highlight things in the manual. And so one of the things I want to point page out, 18. page 18, one of the things I want to point out is this manual addresses minimum standards. I've been roofing for 35 years. I've had my own company for 30 years. I've specialized in tile specifically as a company for 20 years. I have never once in my life put on one layer of 30 pounds of sand and underneath my tile roof. <laughs> Not once. I, I mean, that doesn't mean I've never been a production contractor. I've never had to, you know, cut pennies on the dollar. I've been a, been a high end, quality minded contractor. But I've never once done that. And that was my sales rep back in 1992 who said, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, Concerned about getting into tile, or you, you know, you, you want to just do high-end stuff. You want to you want to do it to make more money and not hire more people. Um, then just go quality. Okay, what do I do to go quality? Well, don't make mistakes. How do I not make mistakes? Have a good backup system. So I've always put two layers of 30 pound. Down. That's my my base installation is two layers of 30 pound. It's great to go to a homeowner and say, yeah, the minimum is one layer of 30. We do two. And here's the advantages. Lisa talked to you about how you don't just lay one on top of another, which gives you an advantage, but not the total advantage. You stagger them so there's an 18 inch overlap. You know, those small things, those are great sales points. The other thing, when we're talking about minimum standards, this manual is covering, covering the minimum standards in 49 states. The states are very different. <laughs> if you've noticed, I mean, what you guys are dealing with here with wind, and we talk about Seattle being uh, a rainy city, you guys had, or Houston and, and the Gulf had, close to our annual rainfall in what, four days? Yeah, four hours and zero. Yeah, I mean, it was absolutely insane. Seattle averages shy of six inches a, uh, our rainiest month of the year is December, we average uh, just shy of six inches a year. New Smyrna Beach got 5.7 inches in an hour. And record breaking hell. Yeah, yeah, and, and along with the wind. So, so when we talk about certain things, and somebody says, "Hey, in my area, that's not, not going to fly," well, that they may be from a specific area where, where a problem is exacerbated by the climate uh, of of extreme cold heat. Yeah, just understand, you guys do repairs. So, I heard a couple of people talk about things that just rang true to me. I make my my, my I make more money off doing repairs than I have off putting on roofs, uh, because knowing where the problem is is very valuable to people that have a problem. So, when we're talking about the two different systems. When I started roofing, I actually did do some roofs before I started my own company that I didn't put one layer of 30 pound down. Uh, so I can still say that because we didn't put anything down. It was on space decking. That means they were rafters or trusses and we put one by sixes across, spaced appropriately, and we hung the tile on them and they didn't leak. No plywood, no underlay, but that's the way it was still done when I started roofing. And up until about 1990, 91, it was still allowed. Um, and what that means is that, that with proper flashing and details in many climates, you can, you can do that. Part of it, you know, the pitch, the complexity of the roof, a lot of different things go into that. I wouldn't want to do that here. I've seen ever. some uh, lower slope roofs, probably the forum 12, that have that with a small, uh, I guess it's a, a 12 inch uh, mm -hmm. down here it's at forum 12. Yeah, I, I think there were some down. I, I remember hearing, uh, the, what was the hurricane hit? September Harvey. 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 And then Hugo was what, four or five years old? Something like that, six years old? Was Hugo the one? Not yet. There was one there was one in Houston where I heard there were some issues with the was I mean it was I and and the issue was that hey there was some damage on these tile roofs and they wanted them replaced, but the insurance wouldn't pay to have plywood put down, but the roofer couldn't re roof it because there wasn't plywood on it. Some of you guys are nodding, so maybe you're you're aware of that. So uh, the point I'm making there is that the tile and the tile flashing details are waterproof, but we do have a requirement for this backup system so that under extreme conditions, heavy wind and rain, which happens to be normal here. Or, I mean, right, you guys are just in a climate where that is the cause. Every environment has its biggest challenge. The The reason that the, the, the cold and snow manual doesn't address the same wind tables is because that manual is not about high wind. You want high wind, we've already got that in the back of this book that, that we're holding. Paul's going to address that. But that cold and snow manual is about cold temperature inversions and, and snow and ice and, and ice dams and, and, and it addresses those types of, 
those types of engineering challenges like, like you're, you're talking about. So now, once we get to that point where we understand what Lisa's telling you is you've got this tile roof and a backup system, she's delivering this to you and having you highlight something that says one inch out, four inches, one inch past the ground, blah, 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 you know. That all matters. Those are the minimum standards. Now, any of us that are roofers, when we sit down and we would cut out our, our, our underlayment or our asphalt shingle or our tile around our, our flashing, it would look right to us or it wouldn't look right. The reality is there's a number in the book that tells you whether it's right or not. And that's the minimum standard. It doesn't mean you can't be larger than that. When we have a pipe flashing, so we got a pipe that pokes through the plywood and it goes through our underlayment and it goes through our tile. We're going to roof that pipe twice. Ignore this. When we go out on a roof, we tell our roofers to treat it as if the underlayment is the roof. I don't believe that but we treat it as if the underlayment is the roof because it's going to be there for a week or two or maybe a month before the tile comes and gets installed. So we want it to be watertight. We use no caulks. I know down here the UV would eat up the, the neoprene pretty quick, but we put no caulks on those, just like you put on an asphalt shingle. We go right over the pipe, we integrate that into our underlayment. I don't use mastic, we use gravity and, and flashing because it lasts forever, where mastic will you know, be great. But, but that's water, a watertight system there. Then when we come to our tile, we pretend like we're on that open space sheeting deck and there is no backup system. We have to have a watertight, waterproof roof that will protect that house from the weather. And we do that again. Uh, we put on another flash and it's integrated in with that tile roofing. So now we've really got two layers of protection. And, and the idea is, I always, it's not that I take offense at it, but I always worry when guys start to think or, or state that the underlayment is the roof, Caesar didn't have synthetic underlayments. There, there wasn't self-adhered back in China when they were building the building the Great Wall and, and still roofing things with tile. You know, they, they, they did things right. And something happened when when our manufacturers as a group said, we need a backup system because, you know, we may not have the skills here that they have in Europe or something's going on. We're having problems. We can't afford these kind of problems on a first class top of the line roof. Let's have a backup system to pick up these minor minor problems that arise. And too many roofers said, that's the roof. It, this tile is just UV protection. Man, that kills me, because it's not. You, you can still put on a good roof. I, I do inspections and I do repairs. When we tell the homeowner, your backup system is shot. Some guys will say, your backup system is shot and you have to re-roof now. And you know, if, if they can sell them a roof good for them, the homeowner may not be ready to. That may push them into an asphalt shingle roof. But if you can say, your backup system is shot, if we deal with the primary system, we can milk out some time. I don't know how long, but we can milk out some time. You don't have a backup parachute anymore, you know, but, but we can milk out some time. I, man, I can, I can make money off that roof for a few years until they've, you know, added their, uh, their, their account so that they can afford it to, to do it right. And at that point, I can upgrade them to a better tile, you know, with a color that's probably gonna hang in there longer, maybe with a different type of batten that's gonna give them some other advantages. So when you guys go to a roof and the homeowner says, I have a leak in my bathroom, you go into the bathroom, and I'm not saying you guys, but I mean, this is a very common thing. You go into the bathroom, you go, yep, there's a big stain around the wall right behind where the toilet is. And when I go up on the roof, there's a pipe that comes through the roof right there, hits that pipe. I'm gonna put a bunch of tar around that and go and give them my bill. So you just put tar around this flash and it has absolutely no problem whatsoever. But 15 years ago when the roof was installed, the roofer didn't put a flashing down here, didn't do anything down at the deck level. And there's a broken tile 10 rows up and that water is running underneath the tile and dropping into that hole where there's no protection. And it's showing up right below. These are right below the top. So, so that we see those things all the time. Um, and with tile roofing, the wrong thing gets repaired because they don't understand that there's this tricky system underneath that's fooling them. And, and what Lisa said about you can see a water trail, we can pick up tile. You know, we can, we can pull a tile to when you see a problem. And so we'll want to chase that problem up to its source. Uh, but so that's that dual system that we've got, the underlayment and the, and the, the flashing system itself. So don't, don't confuse it with the idea that, yeah, that's the, that's the roof, that the tile is just decorative or it's just um, UV protection, because it's really not true. You, you do need both. Uh, has anybody roofed in Florida? Is 
anybody a floor roofer? No. Oh, Paul has, okay. <laughs> now, one of the things we have to drill into them that, that we're realizing is important to convey to them is that if you're a South Florida roofer, they're building a roof underneath the top all the time. I mean, with the volume of rain, the volume of wind, the lower, lower slopes, they have to have essentially a roof underneath the top. They allow on purpose the water to run underneath the top. They don't even put head wall flashing in some installations. The water that beats against the wall runs down and goes underneath the tile at that point and runs all the way down. That is normal. So we, we actually have to tell them sometimes the underlayment is part of the roof and sometimes it's a backup system. Uh, so so uh, for us, it's it's always a backup system. Our tile is the primary, the primary roof. The last thing I want to point out is that when you look at these minimums where uh, it's in the book, it's, it's in the footnote, it's footnote three. So when you look at footnote three on page 18 and it says tile flashing shall extend onto the tile a minimum of four inches on flat tile and a minimum of one inch past the crown on its whole flat tile. The one inch past the crown could cause you a challenge on an S tile because even a 12 inch flashing, depending upon where that 12 inch lead. So, so typically our tile flashings are gonna be 12 by 12 or 12 by 16. Um, that, that 12 inch wide lead flashing may not, may not reach just depending upon where it sits. So you gotta take another piece of uh, block of flex or uh, safe, safe. What is your role called? Safety. Safety, you don't want to say safety flex? Safety flex. I've got a couple different uh, man-made flashings up here, the walk of flex and, and uh, a pan flashing that, that's made by a uh, made for crown. Um, but we've got to do something to meet that four inch and one inch minimum. Four inches out and one inch past the crown. Um, so if you go to the hardware store or, or, or the supply store and you get a standard lead-based flashing that's made for a built-up roof or an asphalt shingle roof, they're typically eight by eight. If you put that flashing on a plumbing pipe, you are there's no way you're gonna go out four inches from the side of that pipe because it's, it's just not big enough. So we really need tile-sized flashings for those.